United Methodist Women. Judy? Oh, there you are. I'm right here. We've heard the Imagine Ministry message that we should make some changes, that whether we like it or not, or agree with it, change is going to come. It is inevitable. Well, just as the churches of the Arkansas Conference need to make some changes, so do the United Methodist Women need to make some changes that will keep us in step with the changing world. In many instances, changes are exciting. They are invigorating and fun. Something new can sometimes add a little zip to your day. But change can also be very intimidating, confusing, upsetting, awkward, and uncomfortable. It is not easy to give up control. Well, by this time, we are very much aware of the fact that change is in the air. And General Conference did approve some changes for United Methodist Women that will structurally strengthen the ties between the local United Methodist Women members and their national structure and the ministries that we support around the world. The Deaconess and the Home Missioner programs will be under the National United Methodist Organization. The General Conference changes will also provide more flexibility to local and district United Methodist women as they organize for mission in their respective communities. The National United Methodist Organization will be governed by a 25-member board of, of directors rather than the present 50-member board. The board will be responsible for managing the organization's program policies and finances. Then a 70 to 80 member program advisory group will advise the board on matters related to program. Every conference will have representation in the United Methodist Women's National Organization. This should strengthen the connection between the local woman and the national policy making body. One of the changes being made here in the Arkansas Conference that affects us is the decrease from nine districts to five districts. The United Methodist Women elect officers in the fall and their terms begin January 1. Therefore, we will not officially go to five districts until January 1 next year. Our present nine districts will meet this fall for a final time at which they will give out recognition and awards. But in preparation for this restructuring, many of our members have been working on standing rules, budgets, and officers to serve in each of the five new districts. The interim district committees will meet in August at the School of Christian Mission to finalize these documents. Then at our conference UMW annual meeting this fall on November 10th at St. James United Methodist Church in Little Rock, the new districts will meet and will vote on their budget, their standing rules, and their officers. And the district officers will be installed at that meeting and they will assume office on January 1, 2013. Each district organization will have new faces, and new opportunities for leadership development. Every United Methodist woman needs to be open to these new opportunities for expanding our sisterhood. Each of our local units has to be viable, flexible, efficient, and a productive organization. Organizations that are passionate about caring and advocating for those who need help in our local churches, communities, and the world. We all must be willing to compromise, to listen, and to welcome the other. We must be willing to share the control and welcome new and different ways of doing things. 
Now, even through changes, the United Methodist Women will remain very intentional in their mission work aimed at the concerns and the perspectives of women, children, and youth. We have a vital presence in the mission field in Arkansas, in the nation, and in the global world. Again, this year, the Arkansas Conference United Methodist Women have pledged $275,000 for national and international mission work. This is in addition to the many dollars and hours that each local unit contributes annually to mission projects in their local churches and communities. The vision of the United Methodist Women is to provide opportunities and resources for each member to grow spiritually, to come, become more deeply rooted in Christ, and to put their faith into action. We want to be organized for growth with flexible structures leading to effective witness and action. The United Methodist Women continue to work to equip women and girls around the world to be leaders in their communities, in agencies, in workplaces, governments, and churches. And we will continue to work for justice through compassionate service and advocacy to change unfair policies and systems. We will continue to provide educational experiences that lead to personal change in order to transform the world. The United Methodist Women play a major role in mission education within the church. Our annual Arkansas Conference School of Christian Mission provides wonderful mission education opportunities for our conference. Each year, members learn about the needs of justice and equality in both our church and society. The studies provide us with information about needs and issues in our world. And we are encouraged to speak out on immigration rights, against human trafficking, domestic violence, and economic injustice. We are encouraged to advocate for justice and the rights of all humans. We are interested in good public education and in caring for God's creation. One of the studies this year focuses on poverty. Many of our mission projects address the poverty needs in the world. And is that not a major mission opportunity that's right in our own local neighborhood? Each local UMW unit must be committed to creating positive change and have the courage to change. I was asked what I was going to talk about, and when I said my topic was change, the response I got back was, boy, I do not like change. Well, life is about change and transition. And even if we are very comfortable and happy with the things the way they are, we must be open to new faces, new ideas, and new ways of doing things. Now, as we go through the restructuring process, we must realize that organizational structures and changes are not our real purpose. The United Methodist Women are all about mission work. We're all about laity leadership development. We're all about spiritual growth. And we are all about bonding and developing a supportive community. The United Methodist Women can be a very vital place for women of the church to grow as disciples and to express their commitment to Christ through compassionate service and passionate advocacy on behalf of women, children, and youth in our communities and around the world. We must open our hearts to the hurts in our congregations and in our world. We must put our faith, hope, and love into action and make others want to join our efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
we have a, a video. Uh, Lynn, there you are. Uh, yes, thank you, Bishop. I'm Lynn McClure, uh, outgoing chairperson of COSRO. We have a video for you that is uh, from COSRO. We celebrate our 40th year as the Commission on Status and Role of Women. It was adopted in the uh, General Conference of 1972, proposed in 68, but adopted in 72. And the work began way back in 1944 with the Women's Division uh, that our pretty, predece my predecessor just mentioned. We thank you so much for this opportunity to celebrate these 40 years, and there's more work to do. Let's look at the video. Thank you. For every voice, there is a gift that furthers the work of the United Methodist Church. That voice is being heard by the General Commission on the Status and Role of Women, COSRO. This is a movement with noticeable results, and 40 years is just the beginning. Through my conference, uh, they talked about uh, COSRO, and I said, what is COSRO? And they shared with me, COSRO is a agency that really advocates for women. I said, sign me up. I first heard of COSRO when I was in college because I was dating a guy who doesn't think that women should be ordained. Yeah, you wouldn't think that that still exists in the world, but it does, and I've dated them. I truly believe that it takes both men and women to do what God has called us to do and be about. And COSRO has consistently worked to try to be sure that uh, both voices can be heard in ministry. It is amazing how women can lead in all other areas of life, but when it comes to the church, all of a sudden um, we want to draw a line in the sand. Even in my conference alone, we're learning that um, salary differences are nowhere near between men and women, appointment process, and we have far more district superintendents who are male than female. Early in my ministry, I, I became good friends with a, a very gifted uh, female pastor. She was asked, in order to become an elder, if she got an emergency call at 2 a.m. in the morning, how long would it take for her to do her hair before she could get to the house? And actually, I was uh, more than a little stunned that someone would even pose that question. It seems like when you go to church, boundaries don't matter because we're all family, we're all friends, we all hug. Well, there's some outrageously terrible stuff that can happen there because people are vulnerable there. At the Central Conference itself, the majority are men. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they have elected a woman, it does say something about what is happening in Africa. But that does not mean that equality is 100%. There is still a lot, uh, uh, a lot to be done. I think that uh, those people that think that COSRO is, has done a good thing and needs to move on, um, they're not living in the same world that I'm living in. We've done good things in 40 years, but the work's not over. We have to continue. Happy birthday, Cosro. Now we're moving from the darkness into the light. Yeah. This is the defining moment of our lives. I'm